Hello everyone, this is Gonzalo Burgos. Uh, this is the second part of the series about spouse prediction by Vedic astrology. Uh, like I promise, this is the second section. Yesterday, on the first part, I talked about a prediction using the B1 chart, which is the Rasi chart, the natal chart. The second part today is going to be regarding the D9 chart, Nabansa chart. Along with the D1, Rasi is basically the most important chart you need to look at whenever you want to predict a spouse. In my case, we're going to use exactly the same techniques we used yesterday to predict uh, my spouse. But now we're going to use Navanza. Uh, you can use any calculator online available. It's better you can go to any astrologer and it can give you a full report. It's going to show you the Navanza. Navanza is the ninth section of the Rasi house number nine. I mean, the the nine the nine house of your Rasi chart is going to be the nine part of the day of the of the nine house. It's kind of tricky and a lot of stuff, but that is Navanza. So Navanza. In my case, I'm Aquarius, Nabansa Lagna. So Aquarius is the sign who rises on my Nabansa chart. So Venus as an Aquarius Nabansa makes the seventh house or the descendant Leo. And Leo, like we said, the characteristics for Leo is to be proud, to have authority, to have creativity, to have pride in what they do. Along with what we mentioned before about Mercury, the Seven Lord, and the Rasi and Leo, that makes a lot of emphasis about the D9. So the D9 house is uh, the seventh house on D9, Navanza is Leo. So that's an indicator that my spouse is going to have uh, some kind of authority in what they do and what they, in the area she is doing the stuff. Leo is ruled by the sun. The sun is the properties of the sun you know is a bright planet very sociable with a lot of power so that makes a lot of sense the sun position on the navanza is in aquarius in the ascendant so the sun goes to the ascendant so one of the things i've been read and learned is whenever the sun goes to the first ha the first house in navanza and he's looking at the seventh house by aspect, it means that my spouse is going to have honey color eyes. So that is going to be very interesting to see. With that said, the sun is on the sign of Aquarius in the Nachatra of Satavishak. Satavishak is a Nachatra uh, ruled by Rahu. And Satavishak, one of the properties of the Satavishak is, is a very outcast uh, person, very outcast very uh, it's called the 100 healers 100 doctors and most likely the symbol is uh it's a circle it's an empty circle so one of the properties of my spouse the qualities of my spouse is going to be that can be a loner somebody who is on the own world and most likely who can have some capabilities to heal so it's going to be very interesting to see Moving to the next section, uh, we talk about the seven house, the seven lord. Now we're going to talk about the aspects receiving from the seven house. The seven house is receiving aspect for Rahu. So it makes a lot of sense because on the D1 chart we were talked yesterday, Rahu is the one who is giving an aspect to my Venus. So that is an extremely high indicator that I'm going to be married and my spouse is going to be foreign. So I'm going to meet her on this country. So with that said, we're moving to the indicator Venus. Venus is the spouse, like we talked yesterday. Venus is located in the Nin house, excuse me, on the 11 house, in the 11 house. And the 11 house is, we talk about gains, we talk about hopes, we talk about wishes. So the Nin house, we are talking about, this is a good place for Venus, most likely in the Navanza is going to be a huge very huge gains through my spouse the income that is going to have my spouse is going to be incredible 
and uh, Venus on the Navanza is on the sign of Sagittarius. Sagittarius is all about philosophy, philosophical mind, philosophical and liberal, a lot of religious. We are most likely thinking on the long distance way and the high mind. So that it conjuncts with, remember yesterday we talked about Dara Karaka Saturn on the sign of Sagittarius. Now we're putting Venus on the sign of Sagittarius, which makes a lot of sense to me. So basically what we're talking about today is we're talking about something that is called, uh, I don't remember the name, so I'm, I'm going to be owning that part. So most likely what we're talking about today is going to be that we, uh, Sagittarius. And most likely when we're talking about Sagittarius, the nakshatra where Venus is placed is the nakshatra called Uttra Ashada. Uttra Ashada. What does it mean Uttra Ashada? Uttra Ashada, it means the undefeatable. The undefeatable. So basically what is going to happen is my spouse is going to have their own battle every day but it's going to be undefeatable. Remember we talked about yesterday about Venus in Ardra, which is the storm who transformed everything? Now we're talking about Venus in Uttrashara. After the storm, it's changed. So uh, how is going to be this transformation? It's going to be through relationship because Venus has been moved seven places from itself, from Gemini through Sagittarius is seven places. So through the relationship I'm going to have with my spouse, the storm, the chaos, the disaster is going to be converted into something undefeatable. That is called through Uttra Ashada. That's in Ashatra where my Venus is placed, my spouse is placed. Venus aspect is coming from Ketu. Ket no, excuse me, from Rahu. So with that said, we are talking double because Rahu is aspecting, is aspecting my Venus on the D1 chart on the Rasi and now it's receiving another aspect from Rahu on the D9 chart. So with that said, we can have a highly percentage conclusion that my spouse is a foreign, a foreigner, a foreign spouse, 100%. So we talk about Venus now. Now moving to the final section that is going to be Dara Karaka. Dara Karaka, as we remember, Dara Karaka is Saturn. Saturn is placed in the third house, the house of efforts, the house of the businessman. Most likely Navanza is the efforts you're gonna put into a marriage. So Saturn is placed in that, but it's retrograde and is on debilitation on the sign of Aries. So what does mean is that in the way that I wait more time to get my spouse, the older I'm getting in, the less effort is going to be placed into my relationship with my spouse. And the most important thing, Saturn is placed in the nakshatra of Barani. Barani is the basically the regulator. It's the one who sets the rules and keep the rules going. So most likely my spouse is gonna try to f complete and keep on the rules within the marriage. And like I said, the more way, the more time I wait for her is gonna be best because it's gonna be less efforts applied to keep the relationship going. Saturn is on the third house receiving a conjunction from Rahu and from Mercury. So with that said, we have I'll be keeping going saying that, but it's very obvious that my spouse is going to be a foreign. And is conjunction with the seventh house, Lord Mercury on the D1 chart. So with that said, we can say that my spouse is going to be foreign. And the characteristics for my spouse, physically speaking, is going to be Mercurian and Saturnian. So that means it's going to be a short, a, a short height by Mercury and it's gonna be a skinny bony shape like Saturn and like we said previously a minute ago 
it's gonna have honey color eyes because the sun is aspecting the seventh house so this is one of the description we can say that I can say about my spouse for real and just want to make a, a statement I don't know who's my, who my spouse is so I'm recording this video today in 2019 and I don't know my spouse I don't I don't know her I haven't met her or probably I, I do I did but I don't know if she's gonna be for me. So hopefully it's gonna be helpful for all the people who is trying to find an answers about spouse prediction by Vedic astrology. And just to make sure I'm barely new on this, I just barely know how to, you know, make a lot of sense on the books I'm reading. But something I know for sure is if you make a good study in what you do, if you make a good conscious in what you're trying to pursue, you can make. So probably all that I've been talking about today, one day is going to be useless for me. Or maybe I'm going to be right. It's like a 50% chance that I can get it or 50% chance that I'm losing. That I'm losing. So we'll see. And, uh, leave me your comment on the video. Uh, I'm gonna go back and review my video probably from five years from now and I'm gonna let you know hey I was right when I was saying that oh no 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 forget about it it was very priestless and useless all my interpretation so hopefully uh, this video is gonna help us to improve our learning about Vedic astrology which is a very very profound system there is a lot of techniques that I'm missing and little by little I'm gonna keep gaining knowledge about that so thank you very much for watching it and have a wonderful day goodbye